boy on Trendy, and I got with me today Uncle Curtis on the Uncle Curtis Smoke Shop. And we about to smoke, talk life, and review some of that Hugh Laws 11, his new DNA Gorilla strand. And I'm gonna tell y'all what it's like, so let's get ready. Let's go. You wanna do the honors or you want me to roll up? Hey, I'm, I'm just a guest here, man. You do the damn thing. All right. So why stuff this? Tell us about Uncle Curtis Smoke Shop and how it all started. All right, well, um, we got a little thing called Uncle Curtis Shop. Uh, UncleCurtisShop.com, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's just a small business my wife and I run. Uh, once upon a time, a few years ago, uh, we, we stumbled across this business out in California called Dad's Elixir. And uh, big up to Dustin and Jessica. Love you guys. Uh, so. They had a good product that I enjoyed and I was using on a daily basis, you know, to help with my mental health and healing and, you know, to keep me level. And, uh, you know, after, after ordering a year's worth of bottles, I got to talking to them and I said, you know, uh, I really like your stuff. I'd like to be involved with what you're doing. And, uh, Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Some nice color on that 11. Ooh, can't wait. But yeah, basically I found a, a good a good dude, like a family business, good hearted person, good quality product, and uh, just asked how I could be involved. Next thing you know, uh, I'm selling Dad's Elixir. We're opening the website. Right. Uh, I've got my own flavor. Okay. Uh, most of the flavors with Dad's Elixir are, you know, reggae musicians. Okay. So different bands, different groups. Uh, there's two of us that have not been musicians and we're FPV pilots. Right. So I'm also a commercial drone pilot. And uh, that's that's actually what the logo is. Commercial is. drone pilot. So you do, yeah. so is that also part of the Uncle Curtis Smoke Shop thing or is that a totally different thing aside from it? No, no. Uh, see, I have that problem where I never feel like I'm doing enough. Right. So. You know, I do the I do consulting for oil and gas companies. I do commercial drone work, uh, you know, inspections, pictures, videos, things like that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> then I also have the Uncle Curtis shop, the hemp business, uh, with the elixir and the gummies. Right, right, right. Um, so for those that don't know, can you uh, talk a little bit more about that elixir? Because we we just running off of it, so. <laughs> Daddy yes. elixirs, I'm gonna let them break it down to you, but it's actually the syrup, 500 milligram syrup. And I tried it already. I really like how it make you feel. This is probably the, the one of the few drinks I have tried that's not a THC base that can actually still give me that THC feeling. Right, so um, as a lot of people know, right, you have your, your normal, THC right products that everybody's familiar with right and then you've got your hemp products right that people are getting more familiar with so dad's elixir is a hemp based product okay so it's you know fully compliant with the farm bill so <clears throat> it's completely legal in all 50 states right you can carry it with you anywhere all the information are on the box packaging all the nutritional facts you can go to the website, look up the COAs, uh, everything with Dad's Elixir, everything with Uncle Curtis Shop. Uh, every product will always have third-party lab testing done so you can go and verify everything that you're putting into your body. Right, right. Because with our products, we don't believe that you should be putting anything into your body that you're not aware of. So at any point in time, it's right there online, fully accessible. You can know exactly what is in every product that you're getting. So if you if somebody was saying um, had like chronic pain or uh, health issues or something like that, would you recommend that or would you recommend to somebody who just wants to get high and just chill out? All right. Well, because of because of legal regulations, we cannot recommend any medical <laughs> cannot make any medical recommendations. You but like, I scratched that. <laughs> but I can tell you from my personal experience only, right? Right. That I was born with Oshkosh Slaughter's disease. I do, I do have a knee issue. I have a bone deformity. So you can see right there. Okay. Right. <clears throat> right. So I've had chronic knee pains. Um, 
as you know, I was an active duty Marine. Right, right, right. So, you know, we do uh, a lot of walking around in different <laughs> different environments. Shout out to all the Marines out there. Salute. But, um, yeah, so as far as my personal knee pains and lower back pains through the things I've been through, right. definitely helps with that. Okay. And definitely helps me get a full night's sleep, which for a lot of people these days is, is not happening. Yes. So for me personally, I can tell you that a good little 50 milligram shot or 100 milligram shot of any of the dad's elixirs, okay, sleep through the whole night. Okay, okay. Yeah, I tried my, I tried mine, and it really puts me down. Like I drink it straight out of the bottle. The you prefer to mix it with anything else? I, it depends on the flavor. Like okay, okay. So so, so my, my personal flavor, the Uncle Curtis Refresher. Right. It's perfect by itself, just as the sweet syrup. Right. Uh, the caramel, we carry that limited edition. Uh, some of the other flavors, absolutely great as the syrup straight out the bottle. Right. However, for example, eh? so watermelon fresca. Watermelon fresca is an amazing mix for that. Okay. Uh, we've got you know Afro, the musician. Right, right, right. He's got the cherry flavor. We also carry that for him. Uh, make, mix that with the cherry limeade. Fire. Absolute. Like fire. a sonic cherry lime? Yes. Oh, man. Yes. That sounds so good. And then, um, like, the caramel flavor. Right. It is just a nice caramel syrup. Okay. So it goes good with coffee. It goes good in tea, believe it or not. Right. It goes good on ice cream with whipped cream. Drill some of that caramel on there, like infused desserts. Okay, okay. Oh. So with the, uh, all the different flavors, I know this is uh, each flavor is like based on or centered around a different person. Mm -hmm. How did that uh, collaboration come about with Daddy Elixir? Um, well, for most of the people, it's because Dad is kind of like the hub in San Diego. Like he's the Padre, man. Like he's he's Dad. He's Dustin. Right, right, he's right. He's an amazing human being. Like he's just he's a good person with a good heart, and he's got a good team. Like, I can't say enough about it, but um, yeah, so most of it's because he's kind of like at the heart of the Southern California reggae scene, so like it's all good people, good love, right? Right. Um, with me, a friend of mine who really got me into the reggae scene also introduced me to Dad's Elixir. Okay. And his name is Big Happy. Or Big Happy. Big Happy. <laughs> Big Happy. <laughs> but uh, also known as Jason. Okay. But uh. Yeah, no, he's, he's one of my best friends in the world, and he actually turned me on to this. Right. I was like, yo, you gotta check this out. I think you might like it. Okay. And here we are, almost three years later, I'd say I very much like it. You very much <laughs> like it? Hey, it looked like it's coming along great, man. So. But yeah, so he introduced me to this stuff. Like I said, I was drinking it for almost a year straight before I ever reached out to them and said, look, like, I'm a business person also. Right. I'd like to get involved. Maybe we can make me a flavor. You know, maybe we could do some business together. And it's been good business ever since. My bad, the light from this 11 up. So, I know you're talking about being a drone pilot. How is that going? How long have you been a drone pilot? So I got my uh, initial commercial registration in 2019. Okay. And I was just doing the overview pictures of some pipeline construction for oil and gas companies, stuff like that. Uh, then I did a six month run of doing power line inspections for Duke Energy up in Indiana. We did the whole state of Indiana. Like every power pole and line that Duke Energy owns. And then uh, I was part of the Eagle View pilot program actually here in Houston right. for doing the uh, Eagle View Assess, doing roof inspections after hail damage. So what is that like? I've never heard of that. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Okay, it's gonna take some of the magic away for anybody out there. For all my drone pilots, you already know, and I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, but I gotta be honest. So for some of these programs, the way it runs now is you take your drone out of the box and you put the battery in. Okay. You hook your phone to the controller. Mm -hmm. All right, so with EagleView and Skydio, they work together to build a program. Right. And you basically fly up above the house and it recognizes the roof. You just make sure that everything is you know, adjusted correctly for right. it to go to the borders of the roof. And you hit go, and it goes down and does the crosshatch. 
takes all the pictures, all that shit by itself. Right. And then it comes home and lands. And then you just upload the stuff to the adjuster, you know, the company. Yeah. So it's just like a, a, it. like an AI blueprint almost. So it just does everything for you. It, with some of these programs now, the way they work, yeah. the commercial pilot is simply there to hold the controller <laughs> while the drone does all the work. And in case some shit goes wrong, you can take control. Right, right. But if shit goes wrong, usually like you're beyond that. So you just got to watch your shit crash. Yeah, they more like uh, train operators then. They just there alone for the ride until some shit happens. Okay, so... You're just there because it's a hard fucking test to pass and get the license? Yeah. So what would you but say... The work is easy. Is, um, like, besides commercial reasoning, do you just fly drones for, uh, like, just personal time or go to, like, little... I'll be seeing the people do, like, drone competitions and different things like that. So with the commercial drone stuff, that's the stuff where, you know, you put on the hard hat and the vest and you just, you're flying the drone for whatever asset. You're looking at your phone there with your controller, right? Right, right. Okay, that's the boring commercial stuff. The fun stuff is, is what you see here on the logo with the goggles. Right. All right, that's FPV drone racing. Okay. Or freestyle FPV, however you want to do it, right? You got race, uh, racing and freestyle. So freestyle is more flippy floppies, you know, doing flips, spirals, you know, crazy shit, like going around corners, dipping down stairs, all that. Okay. Racing is going through tracks and shit like that. Okay, okay. But that's first person view where you got a camera flying, you know, anywhere upwards of 80 to 100 miles an hour. Right. And it's projecting that image from your camera on your drone right into your goggles. So and that's the ones you see like on Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that with the, them going through abandoned bridges and stuff like that. Okay, so oh, that yeah. makes sense. And then you've got your like DRL, DCL, like Drone Racing League, Drone Championship League, stuff like that. You got Multi GP, okay, which is old school drone racing. So what is the what's the what's the top of the line drone out right now? If you if you just if you money no issue, you can just go pick it up right now. What would be the drone that you would go get? It depends. <laughs> okay, so every, every drone is a tool. Okay, right. Every tool has a purpose. Right. All right, so what are you trying to do? Okay, so let's say for each category, so what would be the best drone for commercial use? For commercial use right now, for stuff that I do, if, we, if we're doing like offshore platform work, stuff like that. Right. Uh, I would say the Skydio 2 Enterprise, but they're getting rid of their consumer division and going straight government oh mm. thanks skydio you got a great product <laughs> for us and and they just took it away from the civilians thanks guys <laughs> uh, no but they're they're actually one of the few blue drum companies skydio is so okay. they're made here in america they're used by all the law enforcement and people are like well that's no a lot of it's used for like up north where i'm from originally in illinois right right a lot of senior citizens up there man a lot of people fucking wander off into cornfields that's a big thing Really, like they just it just disappear. Just I'm not like disappear, but they just like oh man, I forgot where I'm going. And You'd just, be amazed the amount of elderly people that just forget where they're at and walk away from senior homes or walk away from their own home. Yeah, and they're just gone. Like they're and you're in a farm town of like seven thousand people, right? It's not a metropolis. So if you take the wrong left, you're in a cornfield for an hour walking in a straight line. Uh, no. so like. Now, you got a lot of old people, right? You got kids that go missing, stuff like that, out playing, get lost. Right, right, right. All right, so you can put a whole bunch of people in line and go walk across fields and through the woods, or you can put a drone in the air with a thermal imaging camera and go, look, they're right there. 20 feet ahead. Right. So you save one person's grandma. Right. The whole thing's worth it. The whole thing's worth it. <coughs> so I noticed you uh, say the term blue drone uh, earlier. What is that? So a blue drone is a... There's a big thing in the drone community, right? A lot of us were using DJI as our commercial drones. Right. And then there was this thing saying that maybe China was maybe stealing some of the information because they were affiliated with DJI and, like, the Chinese government. Okay. And so a lot of people were trying to get what we call blue drones, which are, you know, American-made, approved for government work, law enforcement work, military work, all that stuff. Okay, so they just government approved drones that if, if you fly, you're not going to get shot down or arrested or some shit like that. Uh, it just knows that it's secure. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Because, you know, every drone's got a, blue, a black box. No, I didn't know. So, so like in my Skydio, it's got two two slots for cards. Right. One's for the pictures and videos. 
Okay. One's for the black box. Okay, okay. That tells you every GPS location that thing is taken off from, flew around, and landed at. Every second of that thing's life is tracked. But part of that's also because Skydio stands behind their product. So if that thing goes down and right. it's not something you did purposefully, they will replace it. No questions asked. Just read the black box. They'll be like, yes, that was an error in our programming or whatnot. Right. Because our drone is not supposed to crash. So they say a black box like that's the same as like airports and airplanes and stuff like that. That's pretty, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, to have an FAA 107 license, right? It's a federal aviation administration license. For me to fly and do roof inspections here in Houston near the airport, I've got to get authorization. It's called Lance, L-A-A-N-C, Lance Authorization. Just like I'm an aircraft, because I am, I'm a registered aircraft operating in federal airspace. Right. That's, that shit impressive. Okay. So, we started with commercial, what was the racing? What would be the best drone for racing, for, for FPV racing? It doesn't exist. And I know what you're thinking. It has to, right? No. Okay. It would be a set of components programmed to your style. Because for racing, you have to build your own drone. Like, you have to figure out what your fingers do. Find out what radio is the right grip for you. I do, are you more of a small box? Or are you more of a big radio box? Right, right. Right? Are you more of a digital or analog person? Do you want HD zero? Do you want just regular analog? Are you trying to race with DJI, but you got too much lag, so you can't use DJI? Like, digital's not fast enough. Right. So for racing, you've got to pretty much go analog or HD zero. Okay. Which doesn't make sense to a lot of people. So if you was going to set up, you set up for a racing drone, what would be your, your going in setup? If I if I was good at racing and I was gonna go, if you were good at racing and you could get the, every part you need and how you want to set it up, what would be your setup? Going starting from the controller. I do have an exact answer. Okay. Exactly what Evan Turner is racing from five thirty three. Okay. So who's <laughs> Evan Turner? I have never. Um, he's Evan, a professional drone racer. Yes. Okay. Okay. He is a kid that started from his garage that had good family support, and just blew up. Right. He makes good frames, like does good marketing, is a hell of a racer, nice kid. Like it's one of those things again, if you can tell I'm all about nice people and good quality. Right. Right? right. So no flash, like that hype is for the kids, right? Right. But uh there's there's a, a drone company called Five Thirty Three. Okay. And he makes several products now. But some of the most solid frames, carbon fiber frames for racing. Right. Uh, just engineered the best. Okay. Like his HD zero setup for racing, like what he's running on that is what you want to go for. It's what I would want to go for. Okay, so this is like kind of more of a like the old school tuner mods. They used to do like Honda Civic style. That's more the basic. Right. Of it. Every 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 stack, you know, you got a flight controller and a speed ESC or right? right. speed controller. But you got to program your flight controller for what you want to do. Right. Right. So if you want sharper cuts, right. Like that's one adjustment. Like if you want your throttle to react differently for how fast you move your throttle up and down, right? That's a different tune. Right. So there's so many little tweaks for your specific style, okay. right? That it, there is no one best. It's, you know, how, how you want to tune your pits. How you want to tune it, okay. So what was the, we had one more category. It was the commercial, the racing, and the, I think I had one more other one. That was it. Okay, man. How does eleven? How does eleven feeling? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're a connoisseur compared to everything else you went tried out there. How's the? Oh, the scale of zero to ten. <coughs> how does eleven got you feeling? Um. Yeah, take a look at it. Smell it. Man, right. got there 11. So as far as look, appearance, I'd say 8 out of 10. Okay. As far as smell, I'd say 7 out of 10. 
I, just, I expected a little more citrus or pine out of it. Okay, okay. That, again, I just got back from California two days ago. Right. Right, so. Are you fresh off right. some Cali? <laughs> some I Cali, am, though? <laughs> I am fresh off the dispensary, right? Okay. Um, dude, as far as smoke, it's clean. It's, clean. it's smooth. It's got a nice little ring to it. Like, it's, it's almost like a little sheen, not like a sweat ring. All right. Like it's it's got no like wood cardboard aftertaste like you know what I'm talking about. It ain't been, it ain't been repackaged and boxed. Right, up. right. Yeah. I already know that. That's that's the and touch too many hands. We 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 shit touch too many hands. It ain't good. And I'm one of these people, right? This is one of the most important parts of the joint. Right. When you get down to the roach area, how does it taste then? Exactly. And it's still tasting pretty clean. Right, it's not choking you up. It's not that just nasty end of the joint shit taste. Right. So, I'd still hang tight on the eight as far as the smokeability on it. So overall score, you have to put this on a zero to ten overall with, you know, the mylar, the smell, taste, how it's hitting. Oh, I'm jar over mylar every day. Jar over mylar every I'm day. I'm jar over mylar. <laughs> I swear to God, you ever catch I'm, me moving some bud like out in public, it is not gonna be in a goddamn bag in a I, fucking way. I so love these black Pretty packaging, jars. boys. I love the packaging. Like, great. I love it. I lived in Japan, too. That was awesome, too. But go with the jars. Go if you really love jars. your product, if you really care about your product, the bud, the flower itself, if you care about those beautiful little crystals and hairs, jar. Okay. And for people that don't know, tell them, can you explain why it's better than Jar over Mylar? In my experience, a lot of people I deal with. Right. And again, I cannot speak for everyone, won't speak for a lot of people. Right, right. But in my experience, the growers that I personally know and that I personally deal with are jars yeah. the whole time because they never want to smash their flower. They're right. never vacuum sealing. All right, they're never putting it in any kind of bag. Not a turkey bag, not a mylar bag. Right. All right, it goes from where it's grown in living soil and right. alkaline water, you know, all the fancy <laughs> shit that everybody's testing with their grow ops these days, right? right? But whatever, it's working, a lot of it is. So they're literally going from grow upside down, trimmed out into a mason jar, and then separated into pretty jars. So it's never vacuumed, it's never smashed, it's never crushed. Right. Again, but every person is different. Every person is different. Some people just really care about start to finish, from the time it's a seed to the time it becomes smoke. Right. Right? Like they care about every part of that plant for the whole time. Exactly. They really appreciate the time and effort it takes to do it. So... Damn, well, I'm, I'm I, I had a good question too. But yeah, I'm definitely loving this 11. It's definitely. Oh, yeah. So. As far as what I've seen around here in Houston? This is from Hugh Laws. He was the My Lord champion uh, for Red Eyes last for this year. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> so. He was the champion. He had the best flower out of everybody. Okay. All right. When you said Mylar champion, I'm like, they had, a, they had an award for the best bag. No, no, no. It's like, it was the best flower, but they okay. Mylar champion. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Good, good, good. I'm like, so, really judge like who had the prettiest. He had the, he had the best. But he had the best packaging, too. His packaging came in like a, um, like a brown hacky sack, but it was a clear glass mason jar. Oh, that's awesome. And so it was a um, corpse reviver. Mm-hmm. Uh, we gonna get some of that later next time, and he won. <coughs> so all of his small batch has been pretty fucking dope the last few drops, and he got a uh, partner with Gorilla DNA. Mm -hmm. So I'm liking it. I'm yeah. like you said, give it a strong eight, cause I'm high. Honestly, oh, that 100%. one joint got me toasted right now. <laughs> That one joint got me tough. So tell me about the new Fresca. Oh, oh, this. This, yes, this wonderful this right here. contraption. This right here. That we about to sip on real quick. 
All right, so this I I might have to name. Oops, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to drink it. Oops. <laughs> Ooh. All right. It's so be calling into work saying, "Oops, I fucked up." <laughs> so from the wonderful mind of Tia Marisol, uh, Miss Mary, if you will, Miss Mary, shout out to Miss Mary. <laughs> she go. she thought it might be a good idea if we maybe did like a two hundred and fifty milligram infused strawberry watermelon and watermelon fresca. You know this. You know I know this good. This is the only watermelon thing I think I can actually handle in the world. And I don't like watermelon at all. Really? I hate watermelon. Dude, this is and this is fresh watermelon. Like cold pressed watermelon <laughs> juice. Like like just watermelon. When I say hate with a passion, I mm -hmm. hate watermelon, but this juice is good. Right. So see the problem here. And this is what I found out last night as well. Um, it becomes the oops I fucked up because you take a drink and then you accidentally have already taken over a hundred milligrams to the head <laughs> and um, it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> so it's just straight, no other thing, just the watermelon and the daddy elixir. It, it is, is, yep, it is oh. Uncle Curtis Refresher right? and organic watermelon. Bro, that's hella good. Yeah. And I don't like, I'm telling you, like, Axe Happy Juice, I hate watermelon with a passion. And that's good. <laughs> I'm hey. thoroughly impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, everyone that's tried it is, is I, again, I thought it was good. No, but good. the reactions I've been getting are, are pretty stellar. Like, no. I'm pretty excited. This is definitely good. I'm fucking with it. And that's a good feeling, right? And I've had people tell me, like, like, I don't really fuck with watermelon, or I don't fuck with, like, strawberry watermelon. Yeah. And then they try our stuff, and they're like, you know what? I do kind of like watermelon. <laughs> like, maybe I had to start branching out into watermelon. No, no huh. I'm not, because I still don't like watermelon. But this, I can definitely endorse this. This is a good drink. And like I said, if, if I ever give you anything that is not on par with what it should be, like, don't, don't sweet talk me. Oh, no, no, no. Like, tell me I need to change. We'll change the recipes, change the formulas, whatever we need to do. I would have stopped drinking it by now. <laughs> I would have just put it to the side like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> but I, I see what's happening over here. You're about to hit that oops, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah, because I keep sipping. It's like, fuck. I could, you, I'm hearing watermelon, so every time I taste the watermelon, it's been nasty. So I'm like, that that caution is in my head. Like, damn, this shit's going to be nasty when I drink it. It's like... No, like, why is it good? And I'm like, <laughs> start questioning everything. Like, did I always like watermelon? <laughs> like, have I just had the raw type of watermelon in life? Oh, man. I'm so, I just, like, fucked up your whole life. Yeah, you just, I have, I'm having a whole, like, <laughs> conundrum right now. Like, damn, maybe I just had the wrong watermelon. Been living a lie. Been whole living time. a lie. I've been in the Matrix. <laughs> My ancestors are yelling at me right now. <laughs> this is good. Oh, man. That's awesome. Okay, so let's get back on track. Because I'm high. That, that 11 got me buzzed. Yeah. So you just came back from Cali, right? I did. I did. It was a good trip. It was a good trip. How were the... So the events out here you've been to. Yes. Events out there. Mm-hmm. Vince probably you probably been to a few other events in different places. Where is let's say the most wholesome events are at to you? Like where it really feels like a community of people coming together and not just a bunch of people trying to make money. The most old school, like down home type event. The, yeah. And it's funny, like me and my boy Jason. <laughs> Again, Jason's in a lot of these stories that involve weed. Right. Um, <laughs> so we call this guy Billy Nelson. Okay. <laughs> and again, I have to lead with this. And Jason, if you're watching, fucking Billy Nelson, right? <laughs> Billy Nelson. <laughs> okay. So we met this old dude at a sesh, right? right? Now, out in California, like years ago. Right, right. Like, it, it was, shit was legal, like, whatever. But it was, dispensary shit was expensive. Like, ridiculous expensive, super taxed. Like, taxes were out of this world. So, you know, people, communities, right. would have these little sesh 
events, right? Right. And there was one at a particular lodge. So it's a <laughs> private, you know, private event, private property at a lodge. Right. And they had security and all that. Okay. But you walk in and there's dudes that would tell you about, yeah, I slept on the side of the mountain with this shit to make sure, like through season, right. that it came in good and all that. Yeah. Like dudes that like literally would camp out with their crops right. to make sure that it was gonna be spot on for them, right? And then, you know, you meet the old hippie dudes that would have just boxes of keef and like homemade bubble hash and like whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, people would have just homemade syrups with, you know, all kinds of mixes and drinks. Real old school. Yeah, like it, yeah. like a real old school farmer's market of like weed and mushroom people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and just really good vibes. So like, like a whole crowd of people, everybody jamming, everybody having a real good laid back time. And yeah, like all ages, races, like everything you can think of okay. was all in harmony at these events. Right. For the one purpose of enjoyment of the thing that came from the earth that we all enjoy. Okay, okay. So how is the Cali market compared to out here right now? <clears throat> um, the best way that I can explain <laughs> it, the Cali market, if you're talking about like farmer's market, right? Like sesh market yeah. kind of stuff, like private events? Private events, sesh market type thing. I would say that right now, in October of 2023, right. the events that I'm seeing here are almost to the point that the events I was going to in California four or five years ago were at. Okay, okay. Which is right on par, right? Right, because they are more forward. Right, there, because you know. the way things evolve, like different states, you know, when again, like I'm from not, Illinois, so like rec is there. And we, you know, we're down, so it's a little slower. Right, everything filters yeah, down. Yeah, it's slower down. So, what we're seeing now in Houston with the more openness of events right. and how you've got the different levels of events, you know, you've got your more hemp based stuff, you've got your more underground based stuff, right? you know, and that's great. And it's the same things, right? You're just, you're seeing it evolve. Seeing the exact same thing. So how do you feel about the, um, do you still think the bigger Cannabis brands have the hype that they used to have, like Cookies and Doja and those type of brands. Or you think Small Batch is coming back to where it should have been? Uh, I'm a big, big advocate for Small Batch. Like, no, I'm no your grower. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. When I go out to California, like I will go to dispensaries just to see what they got on the shelves, you know. Right. But nine times out of ten. If I'm smoking flour, I know my grower. Okay. So I'm always on Team Small Batch. Team Small Batch. I'm not a big fan of big commercial growers because I personally, and again, can't speak for everybody, I personally had too many experiences buying big name flowers and pretty packages mm. that, I mean, through glass, through bong, through paper, through blunts, whatever, you know, every smoking variety you can try it's still not what it should be. It's not living up to the hype. Right. And then, you know, you go to your friend's house and he's like, yo, look, look back in the shed. Like, here, let's try this shit that I grew this week. Like, <laughs> and then you're like, wow, this is literally 10 times better than the shit people are paying like $100 a quarter for. Like, bro, I could have just gave you my money. <laughs> if you know a grower, give them your money and support local. Support local growers. So, um... Any good local growers you want to shout out from nope. Cali? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Give me dry snitching on motherfuckers out here. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. We weren't trying to talk like that. Oh, oh, Cali growers. Yeah, Cali yeah, growers. Cali, yeah, Cali growers. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know anybody in Texas. No, 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 no. We, we're not even talking about right here right now. <laughs> we, 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 that, that's anonymous. We don't even know where we're uh, at right now. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, Cali, uh, yeah. Cali growers. Okay, only fire. Only fire. Shout out to only fire. Only fire. Uh, that, uh, what was it? The, sure. the banana cream pie? Oh, the banana apple cream pie. The banana pie. apple cream pie. Holy shit. That was a good one. Hey, that was a good one. And the, um, the, um, what was it? The Coke, the Coke, uh, diamonds. The RC, RC Cola. Cola. RC Cola yes. diamonds. 
Fire. Only fire. RC Cola Micro Diamonds. Fire. So fresh. Burn. Like burns evenly. No black marks. No stains. Nothing. And uh, there's another. There's another place out in uh, Riverside. It's called like Riverside Farms. Right. Uh, good. Good local growers. And it, you know, I was just having a conversation the other day with somebody out there. It seems like the only company from back in the day, like years back, right. that is still pumping out nothing but fire is Jungle Boys. I like Jungle Boys. It's, uh, I got a love-hate relationship with Jungle Boys. Like, I love some, like, some of they should be so fire, and then you'll get, like, a strand into them and be like, what the fuck is this shit? Now, I can't say this with Jungle Boys stuff, right? When you get the Jungle Boys package... Make sure you scratch off and verify yeah, that code. Yep, they out. Any real Jungle Boys got a, a scratch off code on the back that you can type into the little website, and they'll tell you the packaging date, the manufacturer date, what's exactly in it. If it come up not, I've seen a lot of them come up not can't be scanned or mm -hmm. this or that. Don't buy it. it. It has to show up scanned, and it'll show how many times it's been viewed. Mm -hmm. And that answer better only be one. Right. You or, better, or you got a knockoff package. You got a knockoff package. And there's a lot of bad actors out there going online, buying packaging, and then putting whatever the hell weak ass flour into it's it. It's a gas station up the street that sells mylars or a hundred for like twenty dollars, a hundred yeah. pack. They have like cookie mylars up here and everything. You know how many fake zushi bags I've seen? The one I've been seeing <laughs> lately is the um the um the fear of booth, the uh the lemon popper and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, they got like real cartoon looking characters on their stuff instead of the the anime characters. I'm like, yeah. no, bro, so I know this the new V2 V when <laughs> I, I'm a advocate fan of Super Dope. Mm -hmm. I watch their Instagram every day. They would have posted about this, sir. Yeah. They didn't drop anything. <laughs> it's not no version to it. it. Same thing. It's just, I guess the game changing again. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I told you this. I used to own a vape juice company also. No, you didn't. So, yep. Uh, Miss Marisol and I own a vape juice company. Hey, before you like that, you want to try one of those? Oh, what's that? Oh, Either yes. one of the Steezy 40s or the Patty's Baddies. Let's try the Patty Baddies. Alright. Patty Baddies Undertow 10 Pack Infused Pre Rolls. And these are the ones you got from Cali. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotta get hot. We're gonna be on the show. This is here now. Yeah. This is High News Network. We're gonna be on the Snoop Dogg channel one day. Look at those huge things. And these are the Patty Batty. You Patty's got these. Baddies. These are local or dispensary? Those are dispensary. Okay. That's not bad. So yeah, it's it's similar to the uh the baby jeeters. Yeah, just like the baby jeeters, but I ain't gonna lie, they smell a lot better than the jeeters too. Yeah. Well infused joint, low key dusted. A little perso. Yeah. Slide them up. It's good for on the go. Yeah, this that this that fifteen minute work uh lunch work split. Yeah. Like, yeah, bro, we're about to go on lunch, the smoke break real quick. Gonna knock this out and go back in. Oh yeah. But tell me about the gummies. Are you ever uh, go plan on coming out with new flavors of the, the Uncle Curtis gummies? Or do you want to just stay with the flavor of the refresher? So the gummies we have right now with right. this particular manufacturer, uh, which shout out to Aubrey, Aubrey uh, from Exclusive Gummies, okay. which again, you know how social media works, you know, when you have good stuff, sometimes they like to flag you. Right, right. So right. now it's not Exclusive Gummies, but exclusive gummies 
Yeah, Aubrey, great guy. Again, somebody who I talked to personally, you know, talks about doing some business. Right. Got a good vibe from him. Sampled this product. One of the best gummies I had ever tasted and had the right effect from. Right. So I said, you know, what do we need to do to make this happen to turn my elixir into a gummy? Okay. And he said, I got you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I got like, you. Like, like, no shit. Dude just knocked it out of the park on the first try. He did. I can't contest the fact that the gummy do taste exactly like the juice. And it has that, it doesn't have that manufactured candy taste. It has a fresh, like, oh, I'm eating a, more like, almost like a, um, not a gelatin, but like a, um, like a fro, like a molded cool cup or something like that. Like you <laughs> eat, like, if I was to freeze the dad elixir and then take it out and just, that's what it tastes like. It has a good, this is a nice size. I like yeah. the size. Well, it's and, not, and again, that's one of those things, right? Because of the way the farm bill is, right? You got to have less than you know zero point three percent THC by weight, right? Know, something to that effect. However, the law goes. I'm not a lawyer, but look it up. Look it up. So, I mean, who to thunk it? Just make a bigger gummy. <coughs> so. We made our gummies big enough that they can be 50 milligrams per gummy. Right. And, that, and that, still meet all federal requirements. Right. So, yeah, that's we got three gummies per pack. So it's 150 milligrams per pack. 50 milligrams per gummy. For the average person, one pyramid is too fucking much right. for your first time. Right, right. Like, if you're not an avid user or, like, edible user, right. like... A half a gummy, maybe even a quarter gummy, like is where you want to start. Cause I, my god, it left me by a good two and a half, three days. Cause I just eat one a day, like one a day, and put my body at the, at a good resting point. Like okay, I can go, no worries, no pain throughout the day. Just nice two bites, you get kind of full off it too. And once it start, once you feel it, once it hit. You definitely feel the difference in your body. Yeah, that's what I like about them. I love the <coughs> I can't really show them, but I love those the gummies. Yeah, like, they're here, but because of social media, the way the packaging reads, yeah. Instagram does not like the words that are on it. Instagram don't like a lot of words. <laughs> but uh, to answer your question, uh, with this with this manufacturer right here, right, uh, we're gonna wait probably until spring to do another flavor on this one. Okay. Uh, we do have some ideas. Right. But I have a, uh, a wonderful, lovely partner, <laughs> my wife, that uh, it, it's her turn to pick a flavor. So it's gonna have to be the exact right flavor. Right. And as you know, she's got the elixir coming out. That was just about to say yeah, that. Yeah, she's got creme brulee. Right. Like creme brulee elixir coming out. I'm not sure how that would translate to gummy, so we're gonna have to you should do it like the old school caramel candy, something well, like that. Well, now that's, yeah. We we be on, on the same wavelength sometimes. <laughs> like, Got you. Yeah, like as soon as you said it, I was like, oh yeah, no, nah, it has to be a hard candy. <coughs> a hard candy is now, really dope. Now, just for the friends and family group. Just for friends and family. <coughs> I am working with another manufacturer. Right. But we cannot advertise those gummies. Okay. But we do have a uh, Cafe de Alla, I believe it's called. It's right. like a cinnamon coffee flavor. Right. Really good, like super savory, like goes great with coffee. Anyway, and then a, uh, a cherry limeade that is going to be similar to... Oh, that sounds good. That one go The good. cherry limeade. So we'll have the gummy to match the drink. Okay, okay. But that will only be for friends and family, if you know what I mean. Right, right. That sounds like it's going to be good. So, I tried to offer you some psychedelics earlier. And you refused to my offer. <laughs> I respectfully <laughs> decline. No, straight out refusal. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. So do you just not like psychedelics? Have you not tried them? Or do you just, it's just not something you interested in, neither good nor bad? All right, you see the amount of liquid on this table right here? All right. 
I've consumed more drops of LSD than there is liquid on this table. Okay. I have found what I'm looking for in psychedelics. <laughs> hey. So it's it's kind of a Salvador Dali thing where he says I don't I don't do drugs I am drugs. Right. At a certain amount of mushrooms and acid, you don't need to do anymore. <laughs> like you just know how to get there. Right. And it, again, my whole trip with psychedelics. Kids having fun. That's it. Kids having fun. Long as they have fun over there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Again, the, as hippie as it sounds, or whatever, right? Right. Um, after my active duty in the Marine Corps, I went through my stage of psychedelics to try to find what I was looking for spiritually and mentally and all that, right? Right. And through a series of psychedelics, I actually got to a point where I found what I was looking for. <laughs> like I found the peace and balance I needed to find. Right. Like through my psychedelic journey, and like. <laughs> You know, it, it's generic to say and to hear, right? Where people are like, you know, I went to the other side. Right. Like, I saw things and, like, you know, all that shit, right? You could, like, start seeing people. Right, right, for right. For what they really are. And start like, reading energy and all right. that. Right, and yeah. it's not just what the average person sees on the material side. It's, like, seeing through a human and, like, seeing their soul and, like, seeing what their essence is made of, whether it's negative or positive energy and, like, all that stuff. Right. Right. So I got to that point. Okay. And I mean, like, to the point where we were eating acid and mushrooms on, like, almost a daily basis kind of thing. Right. To the point where you have to take ten hits for it to even do anything. Got you. Right. <clears throat> so, loved it. Right. Great time. Went through it. Found what I was looking for. And, and I, I fully support it. Right. I support every single person that uses it for the right reason. Right. Not to escape something, but to find something. It's a learning. It's supposed to be a learning curve. It's not supposed to be escapism or not supposed to use it like to uh, what this like like a crutch, like a crutch. Not supposed to be a crutch. It's actually something supposed to sit down, sit there, learn about yourself, and it's really helpful. Yeah, like I like to um, I like to micro those personally. So I give me a little two hundred mg dummy a day and. I can go out through the day and actually focus on, you know, focus on the the BS of the real world and try to make it through. Yeah. So it's pretty cool for me. But I see what you're saying, though. Like, you already hit that point where you needed to go. You found what you needed to find. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, I like that. and also, to add to that, if we go on that trip to California, yeah, and it's just like a friend trip, yeah. And like, there's no responsibilities that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. Got you. That make, and again, you, you'll have this, like, as they grow up, right? Right. Or you think you've got a free day. Yeah. And you're like, today would be a great day to eat some mushrooms and go on a journey into inner space, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden the phone rings, dad, I'm sick, I gotta come home from school. Uh, and you're like, oh, I'm glad I didn't eat that today. <laughs> like, holy shit, I couldn't fucking show up to the school, pick my kid up tripping on mushrooms. Like, that's a bad idea. Like, that could domino effect into other things, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right, you're right. I so I've always got that, like, that. underlying, you know, I may be called to duty kind of thing. <laughs> and, like, I don't want to fuck up my trip. Right. You know, because I respect... I respect, respect the, the fungus. <laughs> I respect the, we respect the trip. <laughs> again, I was always taught that. That's how I always taught other people. Like, when I came up in the psychedelics right. game, I had a mom. I... Again, in the game, right? Right. We came up as ravers in Southern California. Okay. So, like, it was acid, ecstasy, mushrooms, like, ketamine, like, candy flipping all the time. Like, we were going to fucking Disneyland on, like, five hits of acid, two hits of ecstasy. Like, ah. like <laughs> and this wasn't every weekend kind of thing. Like, either a party or an amusement park. Right. But, like, every group, like, had a mom or a dad. Right. You know, or both. Okay. And that was like the person who'd been doing the shit the longest. Right. And like could keep everybody from having a bad trip, like keep everybody calm, like know how to bring people out of shit if they were going too deep. Right, right. Like, so it was all very controlled and very safe. Right. So I, I fully support all that. Okay, okay. So he supports like safe space healing, basically. Right. And that's what it was. It was just a bunch of young people finding themselves right, right, right. through the use of psychedelics in a controlled, semi controlled environment. Right with other people who had been doing it for a while, who knew the signs, 
that if you started to go off to the wrong side, of like <laughs> we know how to bring you back. Uh, real quick. <laughs> yeah, like hey, look, here's some you know sugar water, here's some milk, or like whatever. Right. See, my first time was actually I was like twenty two, and it was at the Rent Festival, <coughs> Heroes Week Renaissance Festival, campgrounds. Went with my old roommate and. For a lot of younger people, I suggest don't get no roommate. That that shit don't never work out. And in my opinion, it ne roommates don't never work out <laughs> when you're younger, bro. Cause some it, something always happened. But that's besides story. Had went out with that roommate for my birthday November. They had a Renaissance here in November every year, October to November. When we found this uh, cool little couple, white dude, like he had the Jesus mullet, the big like a uh, Yeti uh, fur coat thing. It was one of his friends uh, and his wife. We sit down there talking and making us like the little lunchable sandwiches on the campground kit. This is my first time camping, first time on campgrounds. I've been to the Renaissance Festival a bunch of times, never went to the campground, so this is like new experience. They hand us some malt balls. So I'm just eating them, I'm thinking, oh, it's chocolate with the sandwich, they gave us chips. It was like, they came out the tent. But how many of those did you eat? I said about four. They're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no I was never like, oh no. <laughs> he said, um, those were the sale, <laughs> and those were like gram mop balls, like four gram mop of shrooms on my first trip. Oh shit. So I'm sitting there, they still cooking. I get this Gatorade bottle, he was like, hey, take this. So I'm holding the Gatorade bottle. I'm looking at them like, damn, they're cooking for me. They gave me something to drink. I just start crying in the <laughs> middle of the campground. I'm That's like, so nice. <laughs> I, I let out everything like trauma from shit I didn't even remember eight years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Oh man, she wife was just there. Oh, I just let them get it out and this and that. She gave me a sandwich I'm eating. <laughs> And then we went on this fucking walk. They took some, some of my balls. My roommate took some. We went on the walk to the campgrounds because it's a fire pit at the front. We're walking. And me and the wife are tripping at this point. Like, I'm full blown. Like, why is this walk taking so long? We've been walking for three hours. Like, bro, I never walked this far in my life. The wife. So. We split like, okay, it's me, my roommate, her husband, the wife. We walk in, and then something cut in between us. Me and the wife jump to this side. They see nothing. <laughs> so me and the wife on full trip mode at this point. Like, nah, we want to go back. We want to go back to the tent. They like, bro, what the fuck? I'm like, you didn't see them two people just like walk in between us like, walk between us right here and like no nah, we didn't see nothing i'm like did you see that shit like yeah they had on like green necklaces i was like yeah they had on fucking glow in the dark necklaces you didn't see these people nah bro y'all tripping with nah bro so me and the wife like literally just sit indian style in the <laughs> dirt right there they're like nah bro we're not going anywhere i'm like, done i'm done, done. I'm done. <laughs> we go back to the tent and I grabbed my Gatorade bottle and lay back and they got this like extra big lawn chair and I just pass out. I wake up at like 11 in the next day. Mm -hmm. My partner was like, you up? I was like, you let me sleep in the woods? Like I could have died. Bro, you horror movies? Mm -hmm. He was like, we called you. You didn't wake up. So we said you'd be all right. I mean, did you die? Uh, best sleep of my life <laughs> on shrooms in the woods at Red Fest. That was the 10 hours of like just sleep. Yeah. I was so comfortable, bro. And if anybody ever asked you, like, hey, do you think you'd like tripping shrooms by surprise and then sleeping for 10 hours in the woods? Your initial reaction might be, no, that sounds terrible. 
Turns out it's fucking awesome. Tyler Bass is fucking awesome. <laughs> it was a part where it wasn't fucking awesome because that walk, bro, it was a, like, me and we had a whole protest riot. Like, bro, we're not taking another step farther until y'all agree. Two people just walked past us. And remind you, I never met this couple before. Mm-hmm. Me and her is in complete sync that two people with green necklaces just walked by us. I, I understand. I've had shared hallucinations with people. Right. Where, like, me and another person have tripped the same fucking <laughs> hallucinate. Like, we saw some shit that was not there. Right. Everybody else is like, y'all, you guys know that you're tripped. Like, you know you're on acid. Like, you know you're fucking high <laughs> and seeing shit. Like, how are you not going to believe the sober people? And we're like, no. Fucking eyes this big. <laughs> nope, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. And I'm, but. And then you get support. I saw it, too. So then you're convinced, you're like, yeah, see? And that was the, it was my first time at all. So now I'm convinced, <laughs> she's convinced me doubly time. Like, no, nah, bro, I have a witness. We just seen two motherfuckers in all black with green necklaces walk like, we walking like this. Remind you, they hold their hands. She let go of his hands because the people walk straight through <laughs> us. Yeah. That was started everybody to stop. <laughs> and she's like, why you let go of my hand? Like, you didn't see them two people just bogart their way through us? No. Bro, I seen these two people just like, because I moved like this, because I was like, I didn't want nobody to bump me, and they looked like they was coming, like, right at me. Like, I was like, damn. But then that sleep, then next day I was like, okay, I ain't fucking with that shit ever again. Later that night, like, one in the morning, same campground, we at the same spot again. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll try it again. Why not? <laughs> wasn't so, that bad. It wasn't that bad. So we go, I took three of them this time, so I'm going to take a lower dosage. We walk around the campgrounds. We find a flogging community. First time I know what this is, walk up, older lady, like, she had to be 60 at the time, like, that silver fox type lady in a robe. She, y'all boys look lost. <laughs> I'm high. I'm like, is this bitch tied up? Is a chick tied up getting whipped in front of us naked? <laughs> I'm like, is this bitch tied up? Like, do we need to call somebody? <laughs> like, like, what? Do, do I call 911? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, it's like, no, 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 this no. is the floggers community. That's. The dom and the sub, and then I learned about the whole flogging community. We stayed there for like an interesting 40 minutes, and I was like, okay, let's keep walking. My roommate, he's following free alcohol because everybody just pouring shit into our cups every time we pass a group of people. Like, hey, drink this homemade apple cider, homemade mead. I'm like, I've not never heard of none of these words before, bro. What is this? It's beer we made at home Mm -hmm. you can do that okay learn about the me community and all this then we get to like deep deep in the freaking woods it's a rave community then next to the rave community is a pirate community i don't know this so i'm drunk on shrooms and we're leaving a rave we come out the corner we were supposed to go and i'm just see a big ass pirate community. I lose my fucking shit. I'm like, nope, time to go pack it up. <laughs> it should get too real. <laughs> he was like, bro, I was like, no, bro, it's a whole pot. They got like a pirate, they got the, I didn't know at the time, but the RV is covered, like decorated like an actual pirate ship. So it's just driving back and forth and that bitch look like it's just on land coming to you. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, bro. Can't do this no more. Went back to the tent, fell asleep again for another 10 hours. Missed the whole Renaissance festival event we was supposed to go to. Then sleep again. I was like, so if something about this good sleep is making, refreshing me each time. And that was my journey into Shroom, bro. That was my first journey into it. Then I started learning from there and I was like, okay. I can start here, then I started too much, and then you gotta go through the bad trips when you fuck up and you think, oh, if I can take seven grams or I can eat a full four gram bar. Yeah, 
You can, I can now. It's it's nothing now. But not recommended. Not recommended at all. But if you want to test your limits, I mean, you're gonna learn about yourself, and you gonna have to deal with that knowledge of whatever comes with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's I can't say it's good or bad, but you're gonna have to deal with that knowledge of who you really are, and it's either you gonna change or that trip is gonna be a longer than what you expect that residue off the trip that few days of retrospective thinking about it mm -hmm. yeah. changed me to i'm glad because i was in the wrong you wasn't going nowhere fast back then oh like i said like i said if we if we have time yeah and especially if i'm back on the beach oh yeah like a good you oh, know yeah, to on the beach. a good three four grams yeah like about five, six o'clock in the afternoon, right? San Diego County? Right. We just go yeah. to a nice local, go get us some nice trusted bars or something. Oh, yeah. We got to. I know a place. Teaching me how to surf, that's going to be a that's gonna be a long. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a long, uh, long battle. It's so crazy. Can, we'll, just, we'll get you up on longboard. Yeah, I can do it a uh, big Z style from uh, Happy Feet. Or, you know, if, if you know, if we can see too much, we'll just get some some body boards. Hey, either way, I'm cool with it. But yeah, no, the actual experience. beach, like it's it, it's funny. Even my daughter learned, right? Yeah. Even just getting out there, learning, like even catching a little piece of a wave, like that moment, right? Right. It's it again super stereotypical or whatever, <laughs> but like that that moment of like you and nature and like balance and just. It's hard to explain. It's hard to put in words, but it is an amazing and beautiful experience. Right. And again, I can't say it enough. I am completely thrilled that I got to pass that on this last week. Man, imagine, like, imagine passing that on to your kid, like one of the best experiences of your life. Right. And then you get to watch them do it from like 10 feet away. Right. Like the same kind of thing. And have like, fun doing it. Like yeah. actually have fun doing it too. It's not like forced. It's not like, oh yeah, yeah. Hey, get out there and do this. Like, Oh no, it was cold. Yeah. I was actually like, well, you know, we can wait till spring. <laughs> like we can we can come back. Yeah, we can. We it's a little uh nippy out there right now. And she's like, nah, wetsuits, let's go. I'm like, ah, right. you know, these these kids, they be ready for new experience though, because everything's online. Mm -hmm. They'd like to actually that's why I wanna get out now. Like, now I'm at a point where I can get out and move around and experience shit that I didn't get to experience when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Now I can do it, so I want to do everything. I, I'm ready to go to Cali. Like my best beach is fucking San Padre. Like, yeah, that's my best. That is the that is the the Olive Garden of of the '90s beach to us. Like that is high style. Like you went to Olive Garden in the '90s, you are living big. That is high. Like that was like birthday. Like. My fifth birthday, oh, we going to Olive Garden. That was like, what? Why well, get these breadsticks all night? What the free breadsticks? Free breadsticks yes. all night. Oh, and then bro. what is that like the the something trio like the Italian the trio? The Italian trio. Then you get the that's like the oh, biggest man. gourmet meal like from childhood. Oh, You're like, oh, it's lasagna. A peak nineties eating, and that's what San Padre is to Texans. Like that is. The peak. That's the best beach you go get. Mm -hmm. Maybe West Beach at Galveston, but that's like some. I mean, you know what we've always called Galveston? <laughs> the runoff. It is. Like it's all it is. It's just the runoff. It's just runoff. You like, but you can literally see where the water changes colors at different levels if you stand on the beach in Galveston. Yeah. Like you'd be like, okay, it's clearish brownish in the front, then it's like. <laughs> A little light blue, then you like way past the ships and the oil rail. Like it's blue, blue over there. Like, yeah, that's where the real water is over there. All that shit we got is just dead fish and not as bad as Mississippi though. Uh no, no, but I that's what I, I was get there. Some good crop we were there on a job for thirteen months. Uh Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Waveland yeah. Bay St. Louis, right? Thirteen. The whole coast, like the whole beach was shut down for a year because of bacteria. 
like the water was so dirty that Damn. they had uh, like sheriffs out there on four wheelers patrolling the beach right. so people wouldn't go in the water. Well, it was like uh, that 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 flesh eating algae shit. Fuck man, ugh, that shit make your skin crawl. Yeah. Like y'all need to clean up y'all water, bro. Y'all be trying to eat crawfish and shit all the time. It's nasty. If you're gonna eat crawfish, you gotta go to a trusted Louisiana crawfish farm. So you don't know none of those if you're a tourist. You just be driving through all this crawfish right there. I don't eat crawfish also, like that, so I don't know. What I, mean. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy. As a matter of fact, I just worked with the guy last month who owns a crawfish farm. Yeah. And I was like, man, crawfish money? That ain't when peak season. Man, crawfish money is more than weed money. Is it really? <laughs> no, like, like, okay, let's, let's, let's actually put it into numbers. Like, is it that much more? My man and his crawfish farms, all right, my guy's like 65 years old, right? Right. And he does something similar to what I do for my real job. Right. All right, so this man was showing me pictures and, like, all this stuff, right? Dude worked for about four months, made about $160,000 just in crawfish. Like, it's on top of all his other stuff he's got going on. Right. But he dedicates, like, four months of his time to taking care of his crawfish stuff. Okay. And, like, he's got some little part-timers that help him for the rest of the year or whatever. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, he said, compared to oil and gas money, crawfish money is better for him. So, how much do you assume he makes a year? Like to say, to say, to make that type of statement. No, that's all he does. Like he only puts four months of his own time into it. That's it. Like after the year, it's only four months of work. I mean, I mean, like, I think he's got like, give or take people helping out, like some part timers, like, and again, like it's South Louisiana, right? Part time. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So real cheap labor, right? Like friends and family. Friends and family, yeah. Somebody who needs a place to hide out or whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> little so nephews and nieces. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, go take care of stuff and you know keep their ass out of trouble. But um, yeah, I think I think they only put a total of an extra three or four months on top of that into it, just the maintenance shit. And the other couple months, they just sit there. Right. Like he says, they just sit there empty. Yeah. So it really just probably that big that square, kid. just big square fucking indentions in the earth, like with the ditches around them or like berms. I don't, I don't know how it all works that well. But yeah. They, it seems to be it. an extremely profitable little business. Right. Like, he said it, he paid all his land off within the first year. Okay, so yeah, it might be. Damn, I wonder if crawfish really better than weed. That's a that's a good that's a good discussion to bring up. <laughs> Paul, does anybody know? Paul. <laughs> Who think crawfish is better than weed? No, profitability wise. Uh, profitability wise, crawfish or weed? I wonder. Yeah. Who's think... making more money? Your weed guy or your crawfish guy? If we talking about Houston, definitely the crawfish guy. Right, because just bringing it that little three or four hours over. They're just juicy crabs stay lit every <laughs> damn day, so I know the crawfish guy getting paid. Y'all eat, y'all eat crawfish by the pound out here, like. Dude, there's a little spot out 90, going toward Dayton. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little crawfish shed. Like, it's a pole barn, you know, a little metal building. And they're only open, like, half the year. Once they close down, they're just closed. They just come, like, peak season and that's it, and yeah. sell out real quick and keep going. Exactly right. I ain't gonna lie, that's a good gig, though, because if you can make a few hundred thousand, then... Shit, even if you made two hundred thousand, that you made more money than most people make anyway in a year. You live in a, a nice life. Just for four months of work, the other six you just at home chilling with the fam. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds good, yeah. But I'm sure there's a lot of hidden costs. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to think about the fact that they live in South Louisiana, south of I-10. Right. So at any given time, your shit is going to be oceanfront property. But that's why you. Save up that money for them rainy days, though. Them hurricane days. Them hurricane days. 
them, them wall breaking days, them, them levees, them levee shattering <coughs> days. Dude, that's, that's part of my life. Like working with people, they're like, hey man, we're ready to go back to work. They're like, hey, I'm still putting my roof back on my house. You're right, like, nah, bro, I ain't right. gonna make it. <coughs> that happened like two years ago with Ida. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's how I, I don't see how people live in Galveston like that, bro. Like, I'm not gonna go buy an ocean uh, beachside house in Galveston and on some stilts. Knowing. Knowing that this shit is gonna flip. <laughs> It's it's not it's not it might happen right it's going to happen it's going then you buy the one closest to the damn water yeah on some old wood stilts you then yeah. go get these stilts re repurposed re nothing just <coughs> let's move in all our big house shit to this stilt house up here I wonder how many people from out of state are getting scammed on that right oh you know a lot because like locals know a lot of parts of Galveston, like a lot of the year have uh, the algae shit that comes up that like burns your eyes when it starts. Right. And like, so you got stinky algae, you got dirty water. Pigeons, like, uh, pigeons out like the motherfucker. Not pigeons, uh, what you call them down, the birds out there. Uh, the but, one that eat all your food. But as bad as, as bad as it sounds, right? Like Galveston, you got shit, dirty water, right? You got algae everywhere. Traffic's terrible. Birds <laughs> everywhere. I love that place. I love it. Why? It's, it's like, just... It, it's just like our... It's our touristy thing. Like, it's something we can be like, that's ours. Like, it's Galveston. But, yeah, I remember going to East Beach in, like, grade school. Yeah. Like, again, yeah, I'm from Illinois, but I moved down here first grade, like, to the Houston area. I was in Roseburg. Oh, you know New Yorkers probably getting scammed on that stuff out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, people from, like, inland and where it's no water oh, I'm, I'm thinking, like, Ohio, Nebraska. Oh, yeah. People retiring, like, they're getting hit with, like, yo, hey, waterfront, beachfront property in this condo community. They show up, they're on a building on stilts on <laughs> fucking Galveston. They be looking at Florida prices and Houston, like, Galveston prices. Like, well, behind this house is, like, $200,000 cheaper. Okay. And how long has it been since our last good hurricane? A nice good one? Hmm. Harvey? Harvey? Was it Harvey or uh or Ike? Harvey was more recent, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, Harvey was the the big one that, that hit New Orleans too and stuff and all that. Harvey was the one that I think flooded all the way up to Bear Creek. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that had us shut down for two weeks. Everywhere was flooded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, like, Bear Creek. Like, we found out that, like, a large part of Houston's <laughs> below sea level. Like, Bear <laughs> Creek, like, it used to be a soccer field right there. You used to drive, it's just... Oh, look at those, those ski the boats. Soccer fields, the... <laughs> look at those ski boats where the <laughs> soccer field was at. I the, say, whoa. The golf course, like all that shit. Yeah. It was underwater. Yeah, it was a lake. It was, They were skiing over there. I remember driving out, like, these motherfuckers really got ski boats on the soccer field. Yeah. Like, motherfuckers were riding boats through Houston. Like, <laughs> I remember that shit. That shit was insane. Even though apartments were getting flooded out. Like, oh, that whole, the whole neighborhood over there. All of, like, Bear Creek, like, right off. Uh, Clay Road, Highway 6, like right through there. The houses got three, four feet of water. We were, luckily, and her Happy Jew Street didn't get flooded. And then my apartment, I was on the third floor. I, of course, I didn't get flooded. But the neighbors down, they got flooded. I was like, fuck. And then my car was already wiped out. I stayed in the house for like a month. We, didn't, we couldn't go nowhere. That shit was... Then with nowhere to eat, no food. Like, bro, Houston and got tested a few times. <laughs> this raft that we keep bringing on to ourselves. So I have a weird occurrence of being at work out of town every time a major event happens in this town. It is the funniest good luck for me, but like, it's starting to look like a pattern. Yeah. Like, like I'm fucking suspect. Like, I control the weather or something, right? Like, how? Like, how are you work? Like, I'm in Wisconsin or I'm, you know, in, like, a whole different state. Right. Working. And then, like, a disaster strikes Houston. Like, oh, my God, you heard about this? And I'm like, no. No. 
Man, Uncle Curtis just told us he got the keys to the weather machine out there. That that weather machine they put in Galveston, it's controlling everything. Did you see that theory? That they got the tur the wind turbines out there. They'll suck in water and blow out air to try to make the hurricanes and shit. I, bro, I'm a big conspiracy theory. I love it. Like I can get high and read conspiracy theories all day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Who doesn't love a good conspiracy? A, a good, it has to be a good one though. Like some of them be like, eh, that was a waste of time. But like a good one, yes. Like the like the new Bigfoot one. That's a good one to me right now. I'm like, okay, so either they trying to sell tickets for this new train <laughs> shit, or Bigfoot really just been in this woods mad that y'all built a train through his neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, okay, my favorite new conspiracy. In the whole Tupac killer thing. Oh yeah, the keeping this shit. <laughs> After all these years. And Puffy just sitting over there going, "What? Me? Really? Y'all? Y'all? Yeah? Y'all think that? Okay. I can't believe that. <laughs> Shocked. Shocked and appalled. I'm, he was cool. <laughs> I cannot I, believe this. I thought he was one of us. Heavens. Heavens. <laughs> Heavens, Lord." We have a killer in our midst. <laughs> Can't believe he killed Tupac. Or I know somebody got some information stashed away somewhere. Like, like valid. Why now? Like, why is that shit coming out? That's what I'm saying. Like, somebody had to have some valid information stashed away. They must want him for something else this motherfucking did. Uh, something. Something happened. Like, a contract ran out. Or, like... Something happened. The payment stopped. Like, that kind of bullshit. Something had to happen. Because, right... You, if you go down for that shit right now, bro, you're not gonna make it in jail, bro. They're gonna kill you just off of GP alone. Like, bro, what? You and did this all these years? Nobody gonna protect you, bro. I'm saying. That's, that's and if, a, if you're already, like, in and you're not coming out, you can be the guy who killed the guy. Yeah. Like, they killed Tupac. You go be the guy that killed Tupac with a life sentence. <laughs> That's not gonna be good. Like, <laughs> no way you cut. I don't care what type of street cred. That shit goes out the window. Saying, no, somebody's point. doing that, dude, for just like a handful of chips and soups. Yeah, if that just probably just cause he a Tupac fan. Just, just not <laughs> real. Just, just because I'm, a, I'm a Pac fan, right? Somebody's gonna hit him in the neck. Thug life. Thug life. Ha. Or maybe because I'm a Suge fan. Oh. So now nah, I'm going to get you for that. Because you shot that Suge too. Let's, let's not forget Suge was in the car. Damn, that's that's not... Yeah, he's going to have to get transferred to another state. Yeah, imagine imagine Suge like... Told you. Told you I didn't have shit to do with it. Oh, you, you know he come out with the podcast now. Oh, did he? He coming out with... Uh, it's called uh, uh, Jail Talk with Suge. Mm -hmm. He got his own podcast coming out from jail now. So oh, maybe shit. all of this... He heard that, he was like, man, I'm about to just drop this bomb while I'm in jail. If he dropped that shit and say, like, yeah, I knew Keefe did it the whole time. You know, you're out of there. That's a death sentence on your life. Like, nah, bro. That's a death sentence. I, I don't, I can't go down for killing a legend. Nah. They must want him for something else. He got some information on some other shit. But my own thing also is, <coughs> for years, the hundreds of conspiracies of like, yo, Pox in Cuba. <laughs> the, the shows. How many shows and movies that came out about this? Yeah. Every part of the investigation. We we know more about the investigation through movies and shows. But now what is what? Twenty years later? The ten years later? Oh, it's gotta be twenty. It gotta be twenty years 25. later. Twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, I'm, a lot, a lot of years. I'm <laughs> so twenty five years later. Now, come on now. I don't even think the statute of limitation is that damn long. Like twenty five years. Oh no, murder there is no. Oh yeah, yeah, murder. But oh yeah, well, he did, he did. Uh, yeah, that's but, yeah, that's the whole thing. Can is, you get him for murder though? At that point, like, what well, evidence that? 
forensic evidence got to be gone at this point. Like, it's no type of testing. I don't, we're going to see how it plays out. This shit not going to play. He, either he going to die or disappear. But no, I think the best thing will be if this dude like goes to trial and all of a sudden Tupac reappears. And he's like, no, I'm not dead. What if he come as a court, a court juror? <laughs> oh my God, Tupac as a juror. He's like, not guilty. <laughs> Just looking at that nigga the whole time. So, you, you go lie. You ain't gonna tell what really happened, big dog. I see you shoot me, <laughs> You know, I know you know. But then he can't do that. Then the case is over because you're not dead. Not just what attempted. Yeah. I I take an attempted over a murder. <laughs> <laughs> attempted is different. Like we could have talked this shit out. That'd be beautiful, dude. That'd be beautiful to see that shit play out on like court TV, right? But we never know. Like he goes to trial, and they're like, "All right, you know, in the murder trial for you know you killing Tupac, whatever, right?" And they're there. And all of a sudden, like, we have a surprise witness. We have Mr. Tupac Shakur. Oh God, <laughs> and Tupac comes out as a witness. No, he's going by his real name. What, what, what was this government name? Uh, I can't remember. Fuck, but he just comes as his government name. His mom there with him and shit. Bro. And he's like, Your Honor, I saw that man shoot me. He shot me <laughs> and shook. Right there, like. I'm tired. Of this I just got back from Cuba. He been trying to get his legalization this whole time. Oh, <laughs> he been just waiting for the paperwork. He went to go hide out temporarily and then got fucked over. And he's like, "No, for real, I'm a citizen." I'm like, sure you are, buddy. Oh, what well, somebody just stole his passport? Oh, like that's Tupac really been alive this whole time. Mother just stole his passport and they waited for his papers this whole time. He's a political prisoner. That would be fucking amazing. That story. Oh my god. Dude, that story would be like, bro, this whole time I've been trying to get back. 25 years they've been holding my paperwork up. So he's got no ID. No one will believe who he is. Nobody. They're like, okay. Who's gonna believe you? First of all, you're Dominic. You, you in Cuba. You look Cuban. You grow your hair out or something. That's it for you, dog. You probably got a nice little relationship or something, so that probably lasted, let's say, six months. Then you probably had another six. So you probably was there a year on temporary vacation time. By the time you try to leave, that's well, who's gonna believe you, Tupac? You dead. Yeah. But everything the 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 internet knows, you're dead. So now you just come up. I'm Tupac. But imagine, like, one of the people that, like, claimed to be Tupac or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, really was. Like and the, then just no one believed him. And he's like, no, like, I, I really am. They're like, nah, nah. You a good looking, like, bro, come on. So then he just accepted it. And he's like, well, I'm just fucked. Like, I live here. I lost my paperwork. No one believes on me. And so, like, he had a mental crisis. And he just stayed, right? He just stayed. He just had to work till his paperwork came in. And then, you know, cute book. I don't know a lot about Cuba, uh, Cuba, but I'm pretty sure they paperwork ain't just the speediest, you know, shit to to deal with, especially when you ain't got no I shit, no ID out here. You can't get shit, so I can imagine an American with no identification at all. Yeah. And he, like he lost his access to funding and all that shit. Like, like somebody just wiped his ID one day, uh, his wallet one day. Like, Pac. He went to the beach and somebody just grabbed his shit while he was out in the water and kept going. Damn. And this what whole time he just been waiting for paperwork. I wonder how long that would actually take though, like in real life. Like if you go to Cuba, somebody steal your ID and shit, your passport, everything. Like how long would it actually take to get back to the US? Like what's the steps to get back at that point? I mean, you'd have to find like a US embassy. Okay, so we get to the embassy. That's, that's probably gonna take too long. Probably a day or so to find it. Uh, that's as far as that's I'm like, like, what's the? That'd be my only hope. Like, I don't know. Is there a U.S. embassy? Like, I saw the shit on TV. Do I go there? Do I go? Like, what's the actual steps? And then you, okay, you go to the U.S. embassy. You used to talk about I'm Tupac. Mm-hmm. They know you're dead. They probably heard it on the radio by now. They probably have mourned you for the last three months. At some point, though, they would have, like, somebody would fingerprint you, right? You would think. 
Okay, well, he was in jail, so he did would have his fingerprints in the system. Yeah. Well, that blows our whole fucking theory. Our theory. It, do they even have fingerprinting at the time in Cuba back then? I mean, it's Cuba. Like, they're, they're a fairly modern country. Like, I would assume. I wonder what they just trying to hold them hostage, though. Political hostage. I mean... And not just say nothing. Just... Well, we got Tupac here. Let's just keep him. Could that? That's a realistic. Like governments are <laughs> fucked up. Right? I was saying, like they could, they could have literally just snatched him up as a political prisoner and been like holding for leverage and be like, yeah, well, what do you trade? And they just and the United States government's like, just kill him out. Let's tell the story. <laughs> Let's tell the story. Kill him out. And then they find themselves in a stalemate. Like, well, shit. Now we can't release him. That's why they killed Biggie. So they Biggie would have been the only one that probably would have to go look for Pac. Because they were best friends at the time. So he probably would have been the only one with enough money and yeah. enough concern and enough access. Because I'm pretty sure Pac people and his people, his mom would have contacted Biggie. Like, hey, have you seen Pac at all? He would have they had to kill Biggie because he would have been the only, the only nigga that could have had access to Cuba at the time. Think about it. Him and Diddy was the only black people that would have had access to actually get invited. Cause I'm pretty sure you gotta get invited as America to go to Cuba. They would have been the only ones. With enough money and resources to actually go find him out there. Yeah. Alright, so the new theory is yeah, the, the, new Cuban, theory. the Cuban government. Yeah. The, the Cuban government has Pac. The Cuban government has Pac as a political work prisoner. God. Working for his visa that they keep holding off so he can't get back to the States. 25 years later, he finally get it approved because some new regime has took over. Oh, shit. And he's going to come back to America gonna, just in time for this So trial. before he gets back, they got to get somebody for his death so nobody can prove that that's pop. So they got to get Keefe D in the chair. He's the last link. <laughs> Shug's in jail. Diddy's not gonna say shit. And it's just Keithy left the last of the case. The cousin's dead. Mm -hmm. Biggie's dead. I'm pretty sure. Is his mom still alive? All right. If not, she's elderly at this point. I'm pretty <laughs> sure she don't remember anything like that. She's Both no threat. Wrong, no threat. No threat. So he's the last living, able bodied link that remembers everything. <laughs> Keithy D. Damn. He's going to hang himself in prison. He's going to hang himself before a trial, right when Pac lands, and then they go arrest him for some bullshit, and he's just going to be in jail the rest of the time. Thrown in Supermax somewhere. Or he's not going to care and just want to come back to the States and start a new life. I'm like, fuck it. Everybody he knew is dead now. Yeah. Literally, there's no besides Snoop. He's gonna buy a farm in Nebraska. But Snoop, Snoop not gonna probably. I mean, what's really the connection there besides well, a few year or two of actually rapping together? Yeah. So, nah, Shug. But I'm pretty sure he don't want to see Shug at this point. Yeah, man. That's fuck. That's a nice theory. Cause it doesn't make no sense. Twenty five years later, you want to charge him with the death. Mm -hmm. You and had this man on what all type of other drug charges. You and had this man on trafficking charges. We seen it. We seen it on the shows. They they ain't had him for multiple other things. They ain't had him for the pot case once or twice. Nothing ever stood. But now. New evidence. <laughs> Twenty five years later, I think I'm pretty sure Cuba regime changes frequently. I'm pretty sure it's not a, a stable government body over there. That's just you know, like America. Like we got the same motherfucker for eight years if we want them. Like now, nah, I'm pretty sure it's the 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 will of the people. <laughs> this shit get changed mighty quick. <laughs> That'd be cool, bro. And what if he started it? What if he started the revolution? <laughs> he was just tired of that shit one day. <laughs> just tired of going to work. <laughs> he 
just went postal. <laughs> Bitch, I'm Pac. <laughs> Pac went thug life in Cuba. Pac went thug life. And just made a whole regime change. <laughs> made a whole over just to get back to America 25 years later. Turns out, uh, um, M. Night Shyamalan twist, <laughs> turns out the new Cuban president is Pac. He's just gone through some surgeries. He's gone through some serious changes. So now he married all the Cuban people for the shit he had to go through. Right, he's getting his payback. He gets, that's why he treated everybody so bad. <laughs> Man, fuck them. When I got here, they didn't help me with shit. I'm taking all the money, all the gold, all the resources. Remember when I asked you for help? Remember? Remember? Oh, yo, now they go to what school? Hey, demolish that bitch next week. <laughs> That bitch going to whole school for that one. <laughs> Yo, that's a great pop theory. Now, you ever seen that movie, The Blacklist? Or, I mean, the TV show, The Blacklist? No, what's that? All right, so uh, it's about this guy. He's like an international criminal connoisseur, like concierge guy, whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's called, a criminal concierge, some shit like that. But anyway, he's like the biggest international criminal. Right. He randomly comes and turns himself into the FBI one day. Hmm. But it like turns out he's looking for a specific agent lady and somehow they're connected right. through like her biological parents but she was at, anyway it's all a fucker story <laughs> where the fuck was I going with that <laughs> uh, anyway it had something to do about spy oh okay so the spy dude right right and like they keep referencing this one guy who goes through like these multiple surgeries. He starts off as one of the first FBI agents or whatever, right? right? Like in the very beginning. And so he's like, oh, I'm gonna get like my ears trimmed down, and then I'm gonna get my chin done, and my nose done, and my eyes done. Right. <clears throat> so as the series goes on, they talk about this guy getting all these changes. Right. And like becomes a whole fucking different person. <laughs> like like he goes from like this normal dude from like the Midwest right. to looking like this like mafia don like boss. Okay, okay. So uh <clears throat> like as he's going deep recovery, you know, like he keeps getting surgeries done to look. The it's a show. of course I'm high as fuck, so it's like oh, it's, it's a movie. That. Uh, they got that concept of uh, uh, smoking aces. Mm -hmm. You seen that same like same concept? Concept they keep getting surgery, like the facial reconstruction and stuff. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a, that's the movie I'm thinking of. Smoking aces, yeah, with the bounty hunters, they all after the dude in Las Vegas, yeah, 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 yeah. With, with, yeah that's I'm, I'm getting shit twisted, up. <laughs> yeah. They uh, he that's, did all the that's uh, crazy, you know exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> that, I was like, that's the only movie I could think of that has that, that concept besides Face Off. That was my shit, though, yeah. That was that was crazy. I love Face Off. That was the movie. But yeah, man. Smoking Aces is the one where he becomes the Italian dude, yeah. He becomes the Italian mob boss, uh. And then the cop was protecting him because he had to do the, the liver transplant. Yeah. Yeah, right. I remember that one. I didn't like the second one they made. Yeah. Yeah, that was true. Every time they remake a movie, it's just... Almost every trend. time, yeah. Have you seen the new... Um, not Resident Evil. The new... Uh, what you call it? With uh, Sweet Tooth. Uh, the freak is it Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal. I have not yet seen it. I watch it. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I have not yet seen it. I, it was like no spoilers at all. You gotta watch it though. Hey, yeah. Anthony it's Mackie. It's on Peacock, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Peacock. It's funny. It's I'm, dope. It's, it captures. I've been meaning to watch it, so I'm probably gonna watch it today. Watch it. It captures what you remember about the games. And mm -hmm. it adds like the little twist. It, it's gonna be a nice season too if they get the money to make it. It was dope, but we're gonna cancel this video because we like at an hour thirty. Jesus. Yes. Ah. So one goodbye for the last time. Please tell them about Uncle Curtis and where they can find you in your shop and your dad elixirs and all the goodies that you have. All right. Yeah. So for some absolutely delicious and extremely potent elixirs and gummies, uh, visit UncleCurtisShop.com. Uh, or see us on Instagram, Uncle Curtis's shop. Uh, again, limited edition Dad's Elixirs and gummy partners with exclusive gummies right here in Dallas, Texas. Well, just north of Dallas, Texas. Just north of Dallas. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, Uncle Curtis, for joining us, my man.
Thank you, sir. And this is season two, episode one of Untrendy World. Thank y'all for tuning in. See you next time. Peace.